Hello everyone, my name is Akal and I am a somatic therapist. If you'd like to find a little bit about the work I do, you can check out my website which I have posted down below this video. Also down below the video is a website called to, to vaultoftheheavens.com which is a site you can go to to get your natal chart, your birth chart, in which you can find out where your particular planets are placed, uh, which nakshatras are associated with those particular placements. Uh, so today's nakshatra, oh, one other thing I should say is uh, the sun, the moon, and the ascendant are kind of the most prominent energies in your chart, so those are generally what I'm focusing on with these videos. However, with this particular nakshatra, we're going to look a little bit, a little bit, at some of the other energies that might, uh, I guess, how certain nakshatras placed in certain planets can be beneficial or bring difficulty. So Shravana nakshatra, the nakshatra I'm going to look at today, is the 22nd, I believe, nakshatra, and it's associated with Projection 8 or the Integrator. So th this nakshatra is considered an outcast. Um, a lot of the, the books on astrology that talk about nakshatras talk about these sort of categorizations. Um, you know, worker, outclassed, this, that, you know, all these different sort of sort of uh, general descriptors that kind of cover characteristics. Now, the reason this is an outcast, really, you know, it's not saying that these people are going to be in poverty or anything like that. That's not the statement here. The statement here is that their life path, um, which is artha or directed action, is geared towards attributes and characteristics that are often associated with um, the god that's associated with the sign, with, which is Vishnu. Vishnu is the preserver. Uh, the preserver, uh, it's not really concerned with the, the generation or the destruction. It's here to maintain a sort of harmony. And harmony is a big word for Shravana. Uh, and I'll get into that in a little, in just a moment I'll get to that. So, uh, now why harmony? Well, harmony can occur unless, if the positive is out of balance and, or the negative is out of balance, meaning that these two forces of generation and destruction, if they're out of balance, then it ends up happening you have a bias to one or the other. So the function of you know, Vishnu or uh, the force of harmony or balance is to, again, maintain this sort of equilibrium. And equilibrium is incredibly important for all living things. So, essentially, to get to this point of equilibrium, something needs to be cut out. So, looking at the gunas associated with this nakshatra, uh, what we're going to see, of course, is we have sattvic, which is the case for all the nakshatras in this third of the zodiac. Uh, sattvic, at its base, essentially is pointing to uh, the movement towards spiritualization. Uh, the movement towards mystical things, towards cosmic unity, towards, again, these very spiritual notions. Now, how it's done is, in this case, tamasically, meaning the use of the negative mind. Hmm. And I'm going to get to the moment why I said outcast at the beginning. So, now, what's expressed is activity. So, these individuals are using this pivot point. Now, the pivot point is tamasic, meaning, the once again, the negative mind. So they're using the negative mind in order to attain spiritual things through actions and activities. So, now the rulership of this sign is the moon. So the moon is this physical force, which is essentially solid, that brings about activity on the earth plane. You can think about the tides, you can think about all that sort of thing. So how does the use, the use of the negative mind as it applies to activity, how, is, how does that work? Well, what we're talking about is discernment. We're talking about the need to cultivate discernment. So the symbol associated with this nakshatra is an arrow, which is very appropriate uh, because of the arrow, it's essentially being aimed and directed at a singular point. Um, what does the arrow have to cut through in order to get to that point? You know, it has to cut through air, it has to cut through ideas. 
uh, it has to, in order to get to that point, it's got to cut through air, I guess is really the best way to say this. So meaning in this particular case, if you have your moon or say Jupiter in this placement, it's kind of uncomfortable. Uh, the reason is, is that the moon and Jupiter are kind of by nature, well, Jupiter is expansive, but what it indicates is a lot of high mindedness, philosophy, um, you know, again, it's activities of the mind. Uh, which are also the emotions. So any a lot of movement is associated with the moon. So now where this sign might be more comfortable would be either Mercury, Venus, or Mars, the quicker, more instinctual, intuitive planets, uh, which are energies that are prominent in the sign if you look at the padas. The padas, the first section is Mars, the second is Venus, Mercury, and Moon for each one of the four uh, divisions within this particular nakshatra. So, again, this idea of tamasic energy it indicates a sort of narrowing. Uh, and again, that, that idea of being single pointed. Uh, it requires this like narrowing uh, or the cutting out of what's unnecessary. Uh, now, this cutting out of what's unnecessary is predominantly done because this particular nakshatra is within Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is going to bring you some hardships. Saturn is going to bring you pain, fear, and suffering. Uh, Saturn is going to bring you co commotion, you know, uncomfortable happenstance. So again, the benefit of that is to evolve your soul, which is the point of Vishnu. The Vishnu is about, you know, maintaining this balance in the universe of positive and negative, getting rid of and eradicating what is unnecessary, positive or negative, in order to attain the soul's clarity, the, say, the soul's authentic path and authentic expression. So the other sign that's a symbol rather that's associated with this is the ear, it's the human ear. So why the human ear? Uh, because the primary motivation, the ultimate motivation of this nakshatra is the great silence and the I guess highest expression of these individuals is the meditative mind is that they achieve a meditative mind because it's through listening uh, these folks are all about sound and listening uh, now if you're a great listener you do something that well something happens if, well, let's put it this way. If, if you have a lot of moon or Jupiter energy that's spinning around in your being, um, you're gonna have a lot of commotion and motion in your mind. That commotion and the motion in the, your mind makes it very difficult to listen. So, because you end up looking at or listening to this, this internal you know, spin as opposed to, uh, I guess, listening attentively with you know the the sounds around you but also the sounds within you uh, and the sounds within you that we're looking at getting to here is what they call the nod the nod is this sort of you know the this primal cosmic sound from which all creation rose and that's sort of the ultimate goal for these folks so what we have here is we have because we have mars venus and mercury which are all very fast moving planets we also have individuals who have a strong intellect. We also have individuals who have the capacity to have a very strong intuition. Um, now the, the intuition and the intellect are great because what that does is it helps them with that discernment process that's a big part of this nakshatra. Uh, and again Saturn is going to bring them about all sorts of hardships. So if they get misdirected on their particular path they essentially become obedient servants to you know, whatever system that they're stuck in because they don't have any space from it. So if they're overly identified with the material plane with man's creation, they become a servant to that creation. Uh, now the, the Mars, the Venus, and the Mercury, those energies allow for a fast transformation. And again, the assumption is that these individuals are listening. These individuals are growing through that process of listening. Uh, they're seeing around them, and again, because there's a sophic energy that's ultimately at their root, they're seeing around them the potential for harmony. They're seeing around them sort of, um, I guess, unifying influences. So, 
I, one of the things I was reading in here is that these folks have to have the persistence of a mongoose, but the intellect that's like a monkey. Uh, monkeys being intelligent and mongooses being persistent. Uh, the persistence in this particular case, like I said, is related to Mars. Uh, the intellect is related to Mercury. And, and again, for them to be able to have this quick intellect and this intuitive knowing, and once again, persistent action, it allows them to persevere. Because this particular placement isn't really, I, I don't think they've incarnated on the material plane to have joy. Um, I, I'm not gonna say that, that's, that's mean. I, I won't say joy. Uh, it's not, their life path isn't necessarily about creature comforts. Um, the association with that, what I mentioned at the beginning, which is that this is outcast energy, it doesn't mean, again, that they're going to be <laughs> impoverished and going to be like digging through trash bins in order to, you know, feed themselves. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that the need to sort of transcend mental commotion um, in order to, like I said, to discern true reality and to be able to bring themselves to having that supreme focus which is the meditative mind. And that's a pathway towards that supreme focus. It, unfortunately, like I said, it goes through pain, fear, and suffering because you have to be able to perceive, again, Vishnu, what is no longer needed, what is not needed along your path. So oftentimes material things become something we identify with that we think, oh, I need this, I need that, I want this, I want that. Well, that path was more for the folks in the early part of the zodiac they were here to sort of realize the material things in life. These folks are not, you know, this is a much more sort of austere path. I've said this already, but I wanna, I wanna kind of state it in a slightly different way because I think it exemplifies the importance, the overall importance, the overarching importance of this, the energies within this particular sign. Again, if we're gonna look at the gunas, this, this idea of the moon uh, and how the moon, again, if you just think about it, this physical mass, it's this physical thing that brings about movement. So in the case of how it translates as a human attribute, once again, we're talking about the negative mind that creates activities. So this is about right activities. Um, now these correct activities, you know, again, in this particular case, because the process on a deep level is about spiritualization, uh, these correct activities, you know, force these individuals to over time become wise which now this is really interesting because you think about the kind of well according to one of my books the professions associated with this particular nakshatra are often those prof professions that are associated with learning and giving knowledge so what you see here is you see you know the wise individual you know the people who who have grown into wisdom, you know, think about teachers and professors and, and you know, spiritual teachers, etc. cetera. Um, again, the, 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 it's, 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 I think it's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. Part of me, you know, the, the sort of optimist in me doesn't want pain, fear, and suffering to be, you know, these, these guides that they are on the material plane because me, like most human beings, prefer, um, you know, love and light and positivity and things like that, but it's just not how it is. So again, this is the path of deep wisdom. And, and again, so I, I ask the individuals who have this in their chart, particularly as their moon, uh, is to, you know, embrace meditation, uh, embrace the, the listening, you know, and again, we have to get to that point where you have some degree of stillness in order to perceive that ultimate silence. And so that stillness is achieved through practice. It's achieved through discipline. And the overarching energy here being Saturn, once again, is Saturn will force you to figure things out. And so discipline often is associated with the planet Saturn because of the, um, you know, the little kinks in the hose that Saturn will create that'll stop flow. It'll stop the flow of energy. Uh, Saturn will do all sorts of things to inhibit your path until you get it. So you can see a lot of late bloomer energy with this particular sign, a lot of sort of initial trial and error process, as well as sometimes a tendency to shut down, to isolate 
from others. So you can see a lot of isolation with this placement, again, because we have this negative mind, which is very strong in this placement. And that negative mind, again, is sometimes like, I don't need friends, I don't need this, I don't need that. Cutting things out so that they can, once again, be that single pointed arrow that's moving towards that goal, which in this case is the great silence. So with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I connected Shravana Nakshatra with Projectionate the Integrator. All right, so here's Yogi Bhajan's book, The Mind. And in the back of this book is the chart of the universal mind. So this is the chart of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is the Holy Trinity as expressed through base energies uh, or fundamental attributes of all creation, which are tamasic, rajasic, and sattvic. So how, we found, how I connected Shravana is I followed, so at its base, at its sort of deep ebb, uh, what we have is what they call, well, Yogi Bhajan refers to as the impersonal mind, which is buddhi, or sattva, and then we're going to follow this area, arrow over here to the negative mind, to this aspect which he calls the preserver, and positive, again, so what's being expressed here, so we have sattvic, negative mind, and then positive expression, which is number eight, projection eight, the integrator. So what you do now is you flip through the book to where he has the projections. And here we go. Projection eight, the integrator, which is mental intersection. The meditation. Mantra, he suggests doing it for 31 minutes. And the sound is har, H-A-R. So that's a really important focus, which I'll go into in a moment as to why the sound har is so important. All right, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and teach you now projection eight, the integrator. Uh, so a couple things. One of the things, again, to reflect on Shravana Nakshatra, uh, remember the expression for shravana is that of activity uh, so they have to do things and again they have a strong negative mind here so they have to do things that watch out for both repression and expression the negative mind wants to shut things down you know and again it, it's because it's fast and it's protective now that rajasic energy that's being expressed out here um, again, it's a lot of activity. So like I mentioned earlier, what they're learning to do is learning how to utilize that negative mind, which aids in the process of discernment and helps them narrow their focus. Because again, otherwise early in life, let's say with these folks, what you're getting is a lot of like sort of activities that can kind of, uh, I guess, lead them on a different path. Uh, and again, their path really is about spiritualization. On a, on a deep level. So one of the sounds that they're gonna be, we're gonna be doing with this particular exercise is the sound H-A-R, har. Now har is wonderful because, again, Trivana is learning to attune to the ear. So the ear isn't necessarily just picking up external sounds. There's also sort of the, the aspect of internal listening. And I would like you to consider with this exercise the difference between listening and hearing. Hearing, is, uh, well, it's kind of perpetual, right? So we're always hearing. Uh, we're hearing unconsciously and consciously. Listening, though, is, is really directing one's focus to a single point. It's just being very, very present with what is being said. So in order for this to happen, you have to cultivate that attentional focus, that concentration. So this exercise is being done for 31 minutes. Uh, that's the recommended, recommended period of time. Of course, you can do it for three minutes or 11 minutes, whatever it may be. Now, and again, that, what that does is it helps improve that concentration and it helps still the nervous system. And you still the nervous system, 
you slow down the commotion and the motion that you're experiencing within the mind. So the other thing is, is we're making this sound hard and now hard is done from below the navel. So think about two fingers below the navel and the sound is coming up and out. So and typically they, when you're making the sound hard, you're pulling in your belt line very gently. So it's hard and the tongue will flick the roof of the mouth. So you want to kind of roll that R a little bit. So again, it's hard, hard, hard. And now, like I said, the beauty of this is, is that we're connecting the navel point and the third eye in a lot of ways here with this particular act practice is we're following how sound actually is created. Uh, many of us, we tend to speak from here, uh, which means top, down, and out. So nasally speaking, things of that sort. And the problem is, is that there's no power behind it because the power is in the body. So this exercise, this hard, allows us to get in touch with the power that's in the form and learn to speak from there, from the navel, from instinct, from intuition, learning to communicate from that place as opposed to the motion and the commotion of the mind. So the other sounds we're gonna be doing in this particular uh, exercise are Wahe Guru. So Wahe Guru basically means Hooray God. Uh, however, there's more places on the body that we're going to be utilizing in order to make these sounds. So wa, you want to have your awareness around the belly. So think around the navel, the solar plexus. He comes up here to heart throat. Guru is pursed lips. So here the whole mantra is two hars. So it's har, har, wa, he, guru, har, har, wa, Hey, guru. You get the point. Basically what we're doing, and if you can, you put your awareness on your spine, the backside of the body. However, that's not easy for all of us. So you, what you do is you follow these points on the front side of the body moving upward. And essentially what we're doing is we're climbing Jacob's ladder. We're climbing the vertebrae. So uh, let's see. Now, oh yeah, the mudra, excuse me. Uh, the hands are going to be in Gyan Mudra. In order to do this, you want to create a pinch. You want to roll your shoulder blades together and you want to kind of like hug the spine in between them. So it's not a super firm, but you want to draw them back so that the chest can be exposed. And then you want to pull a neck lock. So when you tuck the chin down after you've drawn the shoulder blades together, what it does is it'll picks up the chest. So how you do this perfectly is Set your pelvis first. So you want to push your perineum, the perineal area, which is the space between the anus and the genitals. Anchor that firmly down. So push that into the floor. Draw shoulder blades back. Tuck the chin. And there you have your ideal alignment. So nice upright posture. Uh, like I said, hands in Gyan Mudra. The final thing is the dristi or the eye position. So in order to get this, you know, I guess comfortable because it's again, it's going to be at the tip of the nose, which is not always a comfortable place to focus. So how I do this is I look up and to the right, you inhale, retain the breath. Then you roll your eyes over to the right, not your head. You want to just roll the eyes and look up and to the right, retaining the breath. Roll your eyes directly up, retaining the breath. Exhale all the air out and then bring your eyes to the tip of the nose. Now you can do this lap several times if you wish. Um, usually I just do it like two or three times and then I bring my eyes to the tip of the nose. Uh, so once your eyes are at the tip of the nose, like I said, you have shoulder blades drawn together, pelvis is set, shoulder blades together, chin tucked, mantra, you can go ahead. So I'll go ahead and do a couple rounds so you know what all this sounds like together. And you wanna kind of bring the elbows down and close to the ribs if you can. So inhaling. Har, har, wahe guru. Har, har, wahe guru. Har, har, wahe guru. Har, har, 
Waheguru. And then to finish, inhale, retain the breath. Pull up as tall as possible. So think about 10 to 20 seconds. Exhale, relax the hands. So that is the integrator or projection eight. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I want to say about this. Uh, oh yeah, so the mantra when you're doing it, I do a kind of very monotone and he uses the term clipped or marching cadence. So think about bum, 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 bum. Think about marching cadence, right? So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video 